Hello, everyone. A uh, very warm welcome to all for today's webinar. Let me quickly introduce myself. I am uh, Nilesh Tarale. I head the pre-sales at PCloudy. Uh, I'll be your host today and a speaker, of course. Uh, this webinar will be for an hour, and we will uh, we have kept all the participants on mute for the um, benefit of all. Uh, there's a questions tab in the go to webinar panel. Uh, please uh, ask any questions if you have any time during the webinar uh, to make the session more interactive, and we'll take up those questions towards the end of the session. Uh, in this webinar. Uh, we will talk about why this is the right time for enterprises to move to cloud for uninterrupted app testing from anywhere at any time. No matter the industry, where every, every company is now in the business of developing applications and online experiences. To keep up the competition, uh, you need to stand out in all of digital noise. For your app to succeed, it is critical that it delight your customers with the flawless experience. Now, regardless of what devices they use to access it, new features and updates needs to be delivered quickly and frequently, but without compromising the quality. That's the key uh, in today's era. While development uh, practices have dramatically changed to meet the high-speed demand of today's digital economy, Testing has often been left behind as an afterthought. However, this attitude is changing as organizations discover the power of positive experience and the business impact of negative reviews. Uh, businesses of all sizes are moving towards cloud testing and as a result are seeing accelerated software delivery cycles high quality digital experiences across all platforms, and most importantly, happy and loyal customers. So in today's webinar, the agenda is going to be as uh, follows. To start with, we will talk about uh, global shift in the application testing trends as a result of rapidly changing mobile market. Then we will talk about the uh, advantages of cloud testing and how pCloud takes cloud uh, uh, testing to a new level. We will also talk about manipulating business community uh, with the help of cloud testing. And in the end, we will take a few minutes to answer your questions if you have any, yeah? All right, so let's talk about the global shift. Uh, in the application testing trend. Remote working has become a new normal uh, these days and in the near future too. More and more professionals are going to provide their services from the comfort of their homes. But when it comes for the application testing, typically the mobile application testing, sharing the physical devices to test the application becomes a big, big, big challenge. Uh, this is also a problem for globally distributed teams. Uh, many enterprises we have seen have set up um, a set of devices uh, to perform application testing, and some of them uh, have their own device labs as well. But still, device allocation among the team acts as a uh, hindrance in the productivity. That's, that's what we are seeing in most of the industry. Procuring the latest devices and device fragmentation is also a major challenge, right? We are going to talk more about this. The solution to all these problems is cloud testing, okay? And now, before we talk more about the cloud testing, let's discuss some key areas where enterprises are leading by leveraging cloud testing, yeah? So let's move on to the next slide to see how we can maximize the device coverage. Now that's the key thing here, right? Companies are focusing on maximizing the device coverage to ensure that the application is compatible with all the popular devices in any region, right? The graph which you are seeing on the screen is talking about the mapping of the Android and iOS versions market share worldwide uh, for March 2020, the latest uh, uh, facts which you are seeing on the screen. 
So we have seen that the adoption, uh, adoption rate uh, for a new version for Android and iOS increases gradually, but still a lot of people rely on the older versions, which you can clearly see it from the uh, graph here. Typically for the Android, it is more, not for the iOS too much, but yeah, it is indeed uh, the case even for the iOS as well. So testers have to make sure that, you know, the application is compatible with all the OS versions and other device specifications like screen sizes, right? Custom ROMs add uh, to the device fragmentation even more. And this issue of device fragmentation can be resolved through the cloud testing, right? Practically when you want to do the testing with in-house devices, it is not possible to look after all these uh, aspects which I have spoken just now. But cloud testing, if you really look at it, you can actually address all this. So while testing remotely, you can test your applications on thousands of device OS combinations if you're opting for a cloud uh, testing, right? So let's move on to the next part to see how we can leverage the cloud testing to maximize the automation. Okay, so this is the second most important thing which we are seeing in the, in the industry. And cloud testing is the best way to do that. By implementing cloud testing, you can perform uh, the things which which are mentioned on the slide. You can run the automation test on hundreds of devices. Uh, cloud testing enables users to perform automation testing in initial stages of the development cycle. Now, this will help in finding the defects in early stages of the development. Cloud platforms like pCloudy are also equipped with the next generation features like an AI-powered autonomous testing bar. It saves time to uh, time and resources as uh, there is no need for the human intervention while automating the uh, testing processes. On a cloud platform, you can also perform parallel testing on multiple devices. Now, this will typically speed up the automation processes uh, and the uh, time to market will get reduced. Hassle-free device allocation among the team members, so you don't have to wait for the devices um, there are no queues, you know, there is no waiting time to get the devices for testing. And cloud platform generates automated detailed test reports for effective analysis. So you get pretty much everything in a small package. The third area of focus is the continuous testing. It means testing at each stage of the development cycle. The motto of the continuous testing, if you really look at it, is testing early, testing often, and testing everywhere. Now, this is done by maximizing the automation. And as I told you earlier, the best way to maximize automation is through the cloud testing. So this means the cloud testing is really important to efficiently practice continuous testing. Some of the benefits of continuous testing includes, you know, instant feedback at each stage of the development, typically when we are working in the agile mode. It ensures fast and um, future releases. Uh, it dissolves a uh, disconnect between the development testing and the operations teams. So teams work very closely. Uh, emphasizes business expectations to mitigate the business risk. So these are uh, these are some of the key uh, advantages which you will get it or the benefits you will get it from the uh, continuous testing. Now that we are aware about the implementation of the uh, cloud testing, let's have a look at the benefits uh, which cloud testing brings into the table. Uh, cloud testing is the most effective solution to overcome the challenges of defective uh, device fragmentations, which we have seen a while ago. All the device, uh, latest devices can be accessed remotely irrespective of the OS uh, combinations or the device uh, hardware combinations, you can get it here. Manual and automation testing can be done from anywhere at any time. Uh, it delivers better quality apps with rapid automation. It is a cost effective uh, solution as you don't have to spend big bucks on the uh, setting up the device labs um, locally. Better collaboration among the teams and continuous feedback. Uh, assured data privacy and security as our data centers have internationally recognized certifications. You can leverage the parallel testing 
to save time and efforts as mentioned in the last slide and this also required uh, required to include continuous testing as cloud testing uh, ensures continuous availability of large number of devices yeah so uh, what I will be doing here is I will be uh, quickly running you through the automation uh, the P cloudy what exactly the P cloudy is all about how it happens and then we will uh, see a live demonstration of P cloudy uh, how you can use the cloud testing how uh, platforms like P cloudy how you can perform the testing there on the P cloudy platform right so basically uh, P cloudy is a device cloud uh, test platform which is mentioned here you can perform multiple uh, different uh, mobile application testing like native hybrid mobile web applications and PWA applications uh, you can perform a couple of things on that. You can do the manual testing, you can do the device analytics, you can get the device analytics basically on uh, from this platform. You can also do the test automation there, as uh, we have uh, seen here. Infield UX testing, in case you want to do it, it's a, a single stop shop where you can also do the uh, um, crowd testing. Uh, with this platform. There are two ways to access this particular platform. One is through web, which we are going to see. And the other one is through plugins uh, like Android Studio and the Xcode for uh, the developers to access this particular platform if they want. There are 500 plus real devices we have available on the cloud at this moment. But when you really look at the uh, OS and the device um, uh, configurations, different OS versions, different browser versions and other stuff. So the whole combination of the OS and the browser combination is more than 5,000 uh, combinations we have. The devices are equipped with real operator SIMs in case you want to test your applications with the real SIM, uh, SIM uh, or the operator network. And we have different locations from where the device, uh, devices are spread across. We have uh, three offerings here. Uh, the first one is about public cloud where you can uh, access the devices um, from uh, any location across the globe it's a pay and go model the second one is on-premise cloud wherein we are creating a dedicated cloud uh, for a specific client within their premises we create a lab within their premises which can be accessed remotely by their own team members spread across different teams or different locations and the third offering we have is a private cloud wherein we actually set up again a dedicated cloud for a specific client, but it will be maintained by us in our own data, state of the art data centers where clients can access the devices 24 by 7, um, a dedicated devices 24 by 7 for their usage. So these are three different offerings which we have uh, at P Cloudy. Now, what we will do is we will quickly go to the uh, next section where we, we will quickly show you how we can uh, access eCloudy, what kind of testing you can perform uh, there. Uh, it will not be a very detailed demonstration, but certainly you will get a feel how uh, this can be done. Okay. All right. So this is how the eCloudy uh, platform will look like when the registered user logs into pcloudy this is a device tab where you will see the list of devices as i mentioned we have 500 plus devices available here so you can keep scrolling down to look for a specific device of your choice depending on your need and you can also filter the devices based on the uh, device filters which we have provided based on the os versions oem screen sizes networks and the device location of your choice Right, you can come here and simply click on any of these devices to connect to the device. Right now, before we uh, connect to the device, we have something called My App Data. This is the uh, folder where you can, or uh, this is the cloud location where user needs to upload the applications which is uh, under test, be it APK or IPA, depending on your uh, testing. So you can simply say upload file and upload the file here of your choice uh, for Android and iOS. For Android, you don't have to do anything, just upload it here and from here you can install it on any of the Android device. And uh, if it's an uh, IPA for iOS, then you can just, you know, 
upload the file here and click on this button which says IPA resigning. We will resign the IPA with the same name dot resign times time dot IPA. Now this is typically needed in order to um, install the application on the given devices which we have at PCLAVI uh, because of the security policy in place from Apple. You also have uh, the ex um, UDID is exposed so in case you want to add the UDIDs you can do that but to save your time this is a workaround where you can just resend the IP and then install it on any of the iOS devices right so let me quickly go to the devices and install um, any application from uh, the applications which we have already uploaded to the cloud drive Okay, so I'm just going here and clicking on, let's say, uh, Samsung Galaxy J6. So I'm just clicking on Samsung Galaxy J6. This is how e easy it is to acquire a device from PCloudy. So I'm just seeing a list of devices. I'm just choosing the device which I want. I'm just clicking on the available button and that's it. In a Jiffy, the device will be connected to you and now you can start your testing on these uh, devices. You can install the applications from Play Store in case you have the applications available on the Play Store. You can simply go to the Play Store. You can also install it from here. So let me first show you how you can install it from the applications which you have already uploaded to the cloud track, right? So you just click on the install button and go to the uh, search here and look for the application which you have installed uh, or uploaded to the cloud drive. Let's say I'm going to the Zomato for example. Okay, so I'm just clicking Zomato here and this particular application will get installed on the device which you will start seeing it from here. Now the application when get installed it will be launched for you so you can start your testing immediately. Yeah, you can see now the application got installed and it is launched for me so I can start my testing immediately on this particular device. It is asking me to allow the device location so I've just selected yes and I'm moving ahead now two things which happens in the background one is the entire uh, uh, session is getting recorded in the form of video which will be available in the reports folder which you can see in the report section at the same time the entire device logs are also getting recorded in the background and you can actually go and get those uh, logs from the reports folder which we are going to see now so these are the two artifacts default artifacts which we are providing to every individual uh, user for their session right so this is one way of uh, installing the application the second way of installing the application is of course to play store in case your application is having your internal play store or in the in the market you can actually go and get it from here maybe uh, uh, i'm just uh, looking for let, let's let's take if i get something for uh, let's take it for amazon for example if i'm getting it yeah so amazon online shopping if there's an app here i'm just installing this application okay so you can just click on this install right the application will be uh, downloaded from the play store if you're not able to see this screen correctly and just zooming in a little bit so you can see the application bar is about to get downloaded completely it's done and it will start getting installed and then you can open the application from here. So the, there are two ways I have shown you. you. One is you can install it directly from the Play Store or you can install it uh, from the install uh, feature which we have provided. That is in case you are getting the applications uh, uh, distributed uh, locally, you can do it this fashion. Okay, so by the time this application is getting installed, now as a manual test engineer, if you want to see how the logs are shown of the devices, you can just click on the logs here and click on this button and you will start seeing the color coded logs appearing it here, which you can monitor while doing the normal functional testing. The application got installed on this device and I'm just clicking on open so you can go and see the application is opened here, right? Yeah, so you will start seeing all the logs here. I'll just make it a little small so you can just see the entire screen here. I said skip signing. Okay, now I'm actually start. I'm, I'm I'm doing the testing here right from the beginning, and you know we have a big uh, feature here which will bring in a lot of value to your existing uh, functional testing is called analysis. When I go to the analysis, you can see there is something called uh, a graph here. You just click on this. Now it will tell you if it's an Android, it will tell you or it will select, uh, allow you to select any application which is under test. Now, if you have noticed, I have installed two applications in this session. One is Zomato, 
pretty much in the beginning and the other one is shopping uh, for the uh, amazon right so i have a choice to select the uh, application for which i want to monitor the performance now let's say there is a scenario where i am installing two applications on the device and my other application let's say zomato for the time being is also hogging a lot of uh, uh, CPU memory and battery consumption of the devices. In such condition, I want to see how my this application is behaving, right? So I'm just selecting the uh, this particular application, let's say Amazon. And once I select that application, it will start appearing here, the name of the package. And here you will start seeing the uh, memory consumption for that particular application, which is selected here, right? So for Amazon, it is 126 MB memory consumed, CPU has gone to 10%, coming down, going to 12% and so on. Same way, you're going to get the network usage, how much data is uploaded and downloaded by this particular uh, application. And also you're going to get the battery uh, consumption by the application. So the red line will indicate the battery consumed by this particular application, which is under test. The blue line, uh, when it will appear here, it will be like, the battery consumption by the device as such and the orange line will tell you the battery consumption in terms of percentage with the device and the application so all this vital information uh, you're going to get it while you're performing normal testing on or the normal functional testing on the device here right apart from that uh, there are a couple of important features which uh, you want to use it here is uh, geolocation testing right so there are there are applications nowadays which are basically a location aware app which will start giving you the content on the screen depending upon the device location so if you have such kind of testing or need you can use this geolocation feature click on this we will show you the google map you can go and select any location on the earth provided it is supported by your application and then you can just you know um, on the map you can go and just click the location let's say i'm selecting something from the um, central melbourne Australia. So when you click on the map, the corresponding lat long information will be picked up. You just say set and that's it. The, this particular location is given to the device at the API level and for the device and the uh, application as if it is coming from the GPS engine. Now, if the application is location aware app, if it detects the location and shows um, uh, show the necessary content from the specific geography, then you will start seeing uh, that here so without pushing the application in the background you can simulate any location on the earth and do the testing as if the device is in the field the second most important thing we have here is network simulation now most of the applications in today's era are the client server applications so it makes perfect sense for every engineer to test how their application behaves under different network conditions right so when you click on the network simulation we will show you different network profiles which we have created Basically, we throttle the network conditions uh, by throttling the six parameters, upload speed, delay, loss, download speed, delay, and loss for the Wi-Fi network, right? All the devices are connected to our Wi-Fi network, and we throttle the Wi-Fi network capabilities to create different network conditions. For example, 3G good. So we have configured this with 420 kbps of upload speed with 100 milliseconds of delay and 850 kbps of download speed with 90 milliseconds of delay, right? So if I want to see how my application behaves under such uh, this this particular network uh, conditions i just need to click on shape and that's it this particular profile is applied to the device and device will start behaving as if you know it is working on the 3g uh, uh, profile a 3g good profile with uh, 850 kbps of download speed with 90 milliseconds of delay, right so you you can see how your application behaves under such different network conditions whether it is handling the situations correctly or gracefully whether it is sending the right message to the users and you know doing the necessary handshakes with the server and so like once you're done with the testing with this particular profile you can click on unship button here or you can pretty much go to the network profile and click on unship here itself right so we have variety of profiles here you can choose the one which is typically needed for your testing so these are two very important things which we have uh, I will not go through each and everything. I'll just talk about a very important features here. So let's uh, talk about this web URL. This is basically for the mobile web applications. We have a lot of mobile web applications also in the market and we also want to see how the, uh, uh, the mobile web applications behave and work uh, under different network, uh, under different browsers, 
right, or, or on different browsers, right? So we have something called cross-browser testing. We have already provided variety of devices with different hardware and software configurations. Now you are also getting introduced to multiple browsers as well. So let's say if I want to open maybe uh, facebook.com, for example, this is the web URL which I want to test or mobile web application I want to test. So I can just enter the URL and here I can go and select the browser. So when you click on select browser, you will see the variety of browsers with different versions. We have Chrome starting from 76 towards 58. Same way we have Dolphin, we have Edge, Firefox, Opera and so on, right? So we have multiple browsers with multiple versions so in a way now you have got exposure to the entire metrics you can choose whatever device uh, combination you want you can choose a variety of browser combinations to see how your mobile web applications work with the different versions so if i want to see how my thing will look like firefox 61 for example i'm selecting firefox 61 and say launch so on the fly this particular browser will be installed on the device and then it will be launched for you and you can start your testing on those uh, particular browser right so it may take a little while because this is a out of the box device uh, as and when user selects the browser we install that particular browser then we launch that particular browser and then we uh, we will uh, launch the url which you have mentioned as as you, you can see it here and then you can start your testing on this particular device yeah. All right. This is how the page looks like on Firefox 61. All right. Now, one very new feature which we have released called local site testing. This is called enable wildnet. This is in order to test your um, uh, staging server applications. You know, if you have a staging server applications or you have uh, testing environments, you can actually connect. Uh, this device to your local environment using this particular wildnet uh, feature we have uh, documentation for here you can just click on this it will take you to the documentation for where you can download the jar file so i have already done uh, that particular jar file and you just need to run it from your local drive from here this is the command for which you which uh, for this you will get the documentation here itself and once you run with your username uh, your password API key and the um, URL, you can actually see uh, we, we create a reverse tunnel. We will basically create a communication channel between your, your desktop or your laptop to the pCloudy. And from there, you will be able to, the user has been authorized successfully trying to create a communication channel. Now, if I try to open something which is uh, on my local machine, uh, I'll be able to, uh, uh, you know, access it from this device or any of my local uh, uh, testing environment, I should be able to do that. But before doing that, once you run this command, you will have to click on enable while Once you click on this, once it is enabled, then only you will be able to access the local environment from this particular device. Okay, and this works uh, seamlessly. All right, now let's assume that you have found some issue here. So if you want to capture further more um, artifacts, you can just click on screenshot. We will capture a screenshot, which will be available here itself, which will be one to one pixel screenshot along with the skin of the device, which can be downloaded, deleted or edited. If I click on edit, this is how the screenshot will look like. Yeah, you can, you can just make it more um, personalized by, you know, uh, saying that this is the issue I found. Maybe the, the uh, uh, logo is not placed properly. This is the issue I found. So I can just save it with more meaningful name. Uh, wrong uh, location. And, and confirm the save. So this will save the edited screenshot here. So this way you can grab the uh, um, artifacts the way you want very quickly. And that's it. Okay, now uh, I'll just give some link to name here, webinar demo, and save it here. And once you are done with your testing, I mean, once you have captured your uh, necessary artifacts, you can also um, collaborate with your uh, other teams by raising the defect in Jira or share the content with you using Slack or GitHub. You just need to log into Jira or other tools through pCloudy and once you log in through our settings page, you will be, will be able to raise the defect straight in your Jira or share within your uh, collaborative teams, right? So you can actually click uh, on the logs, you can say screenshot, you, you can attach the entire logs 
uh, generated so far you can uh, attach the screenshots necessary screenshots when you click on uh, when you provide your credentials you will be shown all the necessary screenshots you can just use that and then you say log box so this will help you to raise the state uh, different state in your jira so in this fashion you can actually uh, uh, truly done, uh, doing the collaboration with you and other teams right once you're done with your testing you can just click on release and just release the device so we will do the cleanup in order to protect your own data so it is pretty secure cloud so all your applications which you have installed on the data uh, on, on the device will get uh, cleaned up we will uninstall that we will uh, delete the data if you're moving to the device and then we will uh, uh, release the device after the device is rebooted yeah so this will uh, make sure that every time you come here you get the device in the same state okay now let me quickly go to the reports and show you how the reports will look like for your manual testing then we will quickly see how the automation can be executed so you can go to the all reports section here and it may take a while to show all the reports You can see the reports here. I'm just uh, clicking on this webinar demo uh, report. I'm just clicking on this. And this is how you can actually open the uh, report and we'll uh, see the report here, something like this. Here you can see a uh, variety of hits, battery chart. If I just expand, you can see all the things are expanded. You will see the entire memory uh, battery uh, information here, which we were observing while doing the testing. You can also see the detailed memory consumption pretty much detail at the Android level, same way you can see for the CPU level, the application CPU system, CPU user CPU, and so on. So you, you are going to get every detailed information which we were observing it there, right? The entire battery network, frame printing time, the snapshots, all the screenshots which you have captured and edited are available here. And these are the two things which I have explained in the beginning. The logs, the entire device logs are available here and also the uh, the video for the entire uh, session which i was doing it there right so you are going to uh, get everything uh, stored for you in the reports folder you're not going to lose any artifacts which you can share with your uh, testing team uh, or the development team or any other stakeholders fine now let's uh, let's move on to the uh, automation tab here when you go to the automation this is the place where you can actually see the automation uh, for your uh, I mean, diff different uh, automation platforms, which are the um, uh, tools which we support. So we support Monkey Espresso, Kala version APM. We are going to see about the APM here, how you can execute the APM test quickly on P Cloudy. So this is what will bring you uh, a big value, of which we have seen some time back, right, uh, on the slides. So you can run your test on multiple devices parallelly, make it run on multiple devices to reduce the time uh, to market. So I'm going to uh, show the Eclipse part here. This is the sample projects which we have. I'm going to use the sample projects which we have at uh, PCloudy. Uh, this is about the sample project which is um, created using the test engine framework with uh, uh, PCloudy on multiple devices for the uh, iOS. Okay, this is for iOS. I'll just take it for the Android one. Yeah, this is the one which we are going to take it. Okay, so when I open the runner.java, this is how the code will look like. So, uh, you see, this is a very simple project wherein uh, we have a, a initialization method where we are initializing the driver uh, for the APM on P Cloudy. So, this is the URL which you have to provide, and it's a capability based. You have to provide the capabilities which is typically mentioned it here. It's very simple to integrate with your existing code. You can uh, see here there are certain tests which we have written and then of course there is the uh, after method which is the teardown method right so it's very simple code which we have the same uh, logic which you will follow in your uh, existing automations and 
to make it run on multiple devices we have we have certain capabilities here so i am using the capability called device manufacturer we have device version device full name you can choose either of these things to select a specific device of your choice but the whole underlying uh, point here is if i choose device manufacturer and if i provide lg or if i use device version with 9.1.0 or if i use device full name with a specific name here i will be running test on one device at a time so to make it um, uh, run on multiple devices at the same time, the same code. We are using something called uh, uh, a parameter here. I'm giving a parameter called device name. And of course, I'm using the device manufacturer as the capability. But when I provide a device manufacturer, sorry, device name as a parameter, which you can see it from the annotation, I can set certain values to this particular parameter from testng.xml because it's a testng framework right so i'm just going to the testng.xml file and here you you will see that the device name parameter is provided certain values like samsung and motorola so it means now platform will pick up two devices one from the samsung manufacturer the other one is from the motorola manufacturer and will execute these test cases which you are seeing at java right these are the two test cases here these test cases will execute on both the devices parallelly that's the beauty here right now if i just quickly say run as this you will start seeing that particular device uh, test will start running it here so it may take a while because it is launching it is doing the uh, building of the project and then you will start seeing a console here so in the console you can from the console you can see the logs you can monitor the logs from console and you can do it uh, you can follow the uh, automation running from here so that's that's how traditionally it, it, it happens but at peak Laurie, we have actually gone a step ahead you know you can also go to uh peak Laurie <clears throat> portal and monitor how the execution is happening there in case that is needed so you can see now the console here on the console you will start seeing the execution happening around now if i go to peak cloudy here i can go to the reports folder and in the reports we have something called my active session right in my active session you will start seeing the sessions uh, for whatever devices you have um, uh, started, right? So it is it is about to start. Let me just quickly see. It says we started. Let's go here and click it back here. <clears throat> it's just loading. It will it will show me the devices which has to be started. Yeah, so on these two devices, the automation is started now. It's on Samsung Galaxy and Motorola Moto G6, right? If I just go here, you can see it is uh, drive is initialized and it is started on Motorola, right? So I can go here and let's say Motorola, I can actually click on this button here to see how it happens. <laughs> So this is the live view from where you can actually see the uh, uh, remote device. It's a video streaming from where you can see how the execution is happening on the devices in case that is needed. So you can see this is the automation happening and this is a live uh, streaming, right? So I, if I click anywhere, nothing is going to happen because it's a video streaming. In case that is needed, in case you want to in interact with the device when the automation is going on, we have something called enable interaction here. You just click on this and make the device into interactive mode. And this feature is available only for Android not for iOS of the uh, interaction uh, thing and once you're done with your testing you know you can get the reports now we are not restricting we are not uh, you know uh, bringing the customers or binding the customers to use only P cloudy so whatever test report uh, testing reporting framework you are using those reporting frameworks you can still go ahead and use it we you are just using P cloudy as an infrastructure to run your test on P cloud right so you you're going to get the uh, test report the way you are getting it even today when you are running it on your local environment and then you can actually um, get your uh, reports from the reporting framework which you have been built in your project from there you can get it right now in the interest of time what i will do is i'll quickly go here and show you how the reports will look like now uh, this execution will is is finished but it may take a little while to generate the report in the HTML format. So I'll, I'll quickly go here and see if I have any uh, old report uh, for uh, automation on. Okay, so this is what I have done it for this. So if I click on view report, this is how you can 
you, you're going to see the report for automation, right? So this is the APM report. That's why you're seeing something like this. And here you would see the list of devices. I just click on the device and on this device, again, if you really look at it, now this is not the actual report what you are creating. You, you can create your own reports, whatever test reporting framework you are using, you can use that. The reports which we are showing you right now, these are the add-on reports. And in the add-on reports, we will show you CPU chart. We will show you memory chart. Even for your test automation execution, we, you are going to get this information, right? Pretty much in detail, uh, without doing any additional efforts, right? You don't have to do any additional efforts. You just uh, need to run, and we will provide you all this information. We are also going to provide you the raw uh, data for all this uh, graphs. You can just download this data and you know create your own beautiful graphs in case you do not want to use these graphs. And uh, we, we will be providing you the entire logs, device logs, APM logs, APM standard error logs for further debugging. Snapshots will not be available here because that those snapshots will be pulled by your testing framework uh, in your Eclipse project. But we will also provide you the uh, session video even for the automation test execution. So you can actually get this uh, video to debug why there are certain failures in case that is needed. So this is how the report uh, reports will look like for the automation right now we we were talking about uh, the autonomous testing if you remember right so i will not be able to show you how the autonomous testing works here because i will take a longer time but i quickly show you how you can execute so you just need to go here and select the application of your choice whichever is under test let's say this thing and then you come down select the application category whatever category your application falls under let's say it's an education application so just select that and then keep providing you all the necessary uh, inputs which you will be giving it to your application while you are doing testing let's say your application requires employee name and employee id right these are the two labels there instead of username so these are all editable things so you can just provide employee name and provide the test data you can provide emp uh, ID, you provide the MP ID, and so on. So you can keep on adding the input fields, whatever typically you will need it for your testing um, for that particular application, right? And once you are done with this, you just click on run. That's it. Now we have the software bots which will do the autonomous testing on your application and will provide you the results, which is typically uh, will look something like this. I have done something for this uh, application, so I just open it quickly that just to show you how the summary will look like. In this summary, you are going to get it typically the quick sanity of your application done and the uh, health check of your application done. So you are going to get something like this where you can see the CPU memory battery network data, which typically tells you how you are doing in the market, how is the health of your application, how much CPU memory battery and network data is consumed on a scale of 1 to 10. So we, we actually create, uh, uh, we, we are trying to, you know, create the industry standard. These are some baby steps towards that, wherein we actually rate your application uh, on the benchmarking, which we have done after testing the thorough applications in the market. And then we will give you rating on a scale of one to 10 uh, with these numbers. And here you can see individual level of uh, CPU memory battery network. So typically the uh, certifier, the autonomous testing will happen on 10 different devices of different hardware software configurations. and uh, out of the six, uh, out of this ten, um, the first six devices will be used by a bot called Fast Test Bot, and the rest of the four devices will be used by the bot called uh, Exploratory Bot Test. Right? And uh, apart from this, you will get going to get certain insights here. You are going to get certain application information. So pretty much everything what you have in your application, you are going to get it in uh, this particular thing. Now, crash test is basically a test uh, bot, which basically will install your application and will tell you if the application is able to install on the device. It will do certain crash by you know running certain uh, dumb monkey. We have brought in certain intelligence to that. And then it will tell you if the application have, is having any random crashes. Then it will also uninstall your application and tell you whether you are able to get whether the application is uh, installing properly or not. Now, the 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 most important thing which we are uh, providing here is the exploratory bot testing. When I talk about exploratory bot testing, this is the bot which has the intelligence close to the human intelligence, right? And this bot will try to mimic the testing as if you know a manual test engineer is doing the testing, right? This is the bot who will use the information which you have provided while 
uh, uh, creating the test uh, schedule here, right? You have whatever information you are providing. This is the bot who will go and pick up the information from there and will perform the testing on your application. Now, since you are not providing or training the bot about the typical use cases, right? Bot will not be in a position to tell you that this particular use case is passed or failed because we are not training, we are not providing that information to the bot. But bot will certainly understand how many uh, device screens your application has, uh, how many uh, logical workflows your application has. It will traverse through the entire logical workflows, try to touch upon each and every screen of the application and then will perform uh, I mean, it will it will do the functional testing on this particular uh, application, and will capture the screenshots. As I mentioned, it will not be able to tell you whether the, the use case is passed or failed. But while doing this, of course, we will capture the entire CPU, memory, battery network information as we have seen, and then we will give you the snapshots, right? So these are the snapshots which we, uh, I mean, uh, the problem the, the bot has captured here. So just to explain this particular screenshot if you really look at it here the bot has understood that there are four different categories in the application hotels car rentals airport transport tools and attractions so it went inside did something came out right on this particular use case of when seeing this particular screen whether this is a failure screen or pass screen bot is not able to understand it may happen that you know uh, as per the specification this is a wrong screen right the sequence of uh, order is wrong Maybe I'm expecting tours and attractions on the top, then airport transfer, then car and hotels at the bottom, right? But that's something which we are not provided to the bot. So bot will not be in a position to tell you whether it is passed or failed. So that's the reason uh, bot will not uh, tell you whether it is passed or failed. We are just providing you the screenshot. So as a manual test engineer, uh, one can come and have a look at these screenshots to see if there are any obvious failures. And while doing this, if there are any crashes, bot will also provide those crashes. So this is how the uh, autonomous testing is performed. Of course, there are a lot of things to be talk about, which we do not have enough time in this given webinar of short time. So we will not, um, we will talk about basic bare minimum things there. So this is what you can actually perform. You can do the autonomous testing. You can do the auto automation runs on multiple devices parallelly. Uh, you can also run the CI CD on this platform. You can do the manual testing and so on. So, This is what uh, we have pretty much in the uh, store today for you. Now, just to wrap up, uh, let's see how cloud testing empowers enterprises to maintain business continuity in uh, even in the adverse situations. Right. So we have mentioned a couple of things here, which is what you are going to get it. Uh, you can test native hybrid and mobile web applications on devices of your choice, which we have seen there a while ago. Uh, you can test from anywhere, right? Now this is from the collaboration perspective or the better collaboration. We have seen that the teams are dis globally distributed these days. And when we are working with the remote testing because of the given situation, you have seen even if the teams are uh, within the same office, now they are working remotely from their home. So. Uh, if you have such kind of situation, of course, you can test from anywhere, whether you are from working from home, whether you are working from different location, does not matter. You can test whenever you want, right? Devices will be available 24 by 7. Now, there is no need that the device will be given to you, so you have to work only in the first half of the day or second half of the day. You can uh, test your application whenever you want to do that, whenever you get the application, be it a weekend, be it a working day, be it in the morning, in the night, whenever you want, because you are accessing the cloud remotely. Flexible resource allocation. Um, the remote devices can be easily shared within the teams. Now the team managers can decide the number of devices allocated to individual team members for testing, right? There is no restriction that, you know, why I cannot give these many devices to a specific team member or something like that. There is a flexible resource allocation available uh, using this particular platform. It is very, very economical as compared to any of the uh, um, physical device labs or when you want to buy the devices. As compared to that, it's pretty economical. And it's maintenance-free continuous solution. You don't have to maintain this. The cloud will be maintained by a uh, P-Cloudy team uh, remotely. Uh, you will be getting maintenance-free continuous solution. You just need to run your tests on P-Cloudy 
uh, devices or the uh, use devices to to perform the manual testing or use these devices to run the auto autonomous testing you don't have to manage this or you don't have to maintain this so this is how simple and easy it is to move to cloud uh, based testing these days so we are pretty much uh, done with uh, the content which i have to be shared now uh, we can move on to the q and a session so if you have any questions i'll be more than happy to answer these questions let me just quickly go and have a look at the questions asked by the participants Okay. Okay, the first question is coming here. It's asking if we can extend the device session 30 minutes to two or three hours. Okay, so I'm not getting the name of the uh, person who is asking this question. Let me just see if I can answer this with his name. I'm sorry, I'm not getting the name here, but whosoever has asked this question, yes, this is pretty much possible. You can actually uh, extend the session uh, with whatever timelines you want. Basically, by default, we are giving 30 minutes session to every individual user, okay? And after this, um, if your testing is not finished in 30 seconds, uh, 30 minutes, you can, you can extend the session for either 30 minutes or 15 minutes, uh, continuously right as long as the devices are available yeah i think this was the question from vishali yeah all right there is one more question from diksha how can we use cloud devices uh, i think uh, i have I've, I've shown this particular thing uh, in the uh, demonstration there if you are if you want to use it for manual testing you'll have to go to the device uh, .tcloudy.com in the devices tab you will see the list of devices you select any device and start using it if it's for automation of course you can select the automation uh, the, the devices from the core uh, uh, on which you want to run the automation and uh, trigger it from there so in the in the sample code which you have seen i have actually selected the the Samsung and Motorola, that's when it is executed on Samsung and Motorola. Uh, the follow-up question from Diksha, again on that, is is it necessary to buy any special subscription for that? So, of course, you have to buy the subscription. Uh, there are subscriptions on the public cloud available which will uh, list you all the necessary features which we provide. So, there are certain uh, beginner level packages where we are not providing the automation. There are mid-level packages where you can also get to see the automation there. And for the autonomous testing, there is uh, uh, another package which will have pretty much everything. The manual testing, automation testing, the autonomous testing, and of course the devices with the uh, operator sims. I hope I have answered your question, Diksha. Okay, there is a question from Akhil Agrawal. How soon do we get the latest browser version supported by T-Cloud? So if you're talking about the mobile web, uh, mobile browser, the browsers will be available as and when it is requested by the client. So we, we keep adding the device uh, browsers in the browser list as and when the browser is uh, released in the market. But if you're looking for any specific browser, do let us know. We will immediately add it to our uh, Kitty. Uh, I hope I have answered your question, Akhil. Okay, there is another question from Priya. Uh, do you need, oh, sorry, do you provide in detail debugging capabilities for iOS and Android devices? Okay, so Priya, to answer this question, we do have capabilities for debugging uh, the applications. Uh, for both Android and iOS, but obviously there are certain restrictions. Since the device, since this particular platform you are using or this cloud you are using over internet, right? So we have a network latency issues there, which is not something to do with key cloudy, but which is to do with the export. So uh, as long as you want to uh, debug the 
Android um, applications on the Android platform, you can pretty much do it on our public cloud uh, by simply connecting the device and we have something called device tunnel. You just need to run the device tunnel and you will be able to see that device it will be virtually connected to your local machine and then that device will start appearing in your Eclipse or Android Studio or whichever uh, platform your uh, SDK you are using, right? IDE you are using, through which you can straight away debug this. Now, when it comes to iOS, typically there are certain restrictions, uh, typically because the uh, speed um, within which are the uh, the the time frame within which the Xcode expects certain responses from the uh, device. Now, since you will be using it remotely from the um, local network, uh, sometimes or most of the times you will not get that. Uh, data back on the export well within time. So the export will close this particular connection, right? That's the reason we have limitations for the iOS um, debugging capabilities on public cloud. If you are using the uh, on-premise cloud, as I mentioned, we have three different uh, offerings. So if you are using on-premise cloud, then iOS debugging is also possible. But otherwise on the public cloud at present, only Android debugging is uh, something which we provide. Okay, let's see that uh, we are left with three more minutes. So I will try to see if we can uh, take uh, maybe two questions, we can take it. Let me see which two questions we can take it here. Okay, so there is a question by Ravi Khan. Uh, will I be able to run my existing APM projects on pCloud in CI CD mode? So uh, yeah, Rajni Khan, as I mentioned, uh, you can actually run your existing APM projects on pCloudy devices in a CI CD mode, right? We have, I was not able to show you that part here, but you have seen that I have run it from the Eclipse, right? So same way, uh, you can actually trigger it through CI CD. Uh, if you're using either Jenkins or Bamboo, uh, which your pipeline you are using it, but if you're using either uh, Jenkins or Bamboo, for example, uh, you can trigger, you can create a job from uh, Jenkins and you know uh, trigger the test from Jenkins. So it will it will execute the test on pCloudy exactly the way we have seen it through Eclipse. I hope I have answered your question, Ravikan. Ravikan, sorry. Yeah. And let's take the last question now. Um, and there there are a few more questions. I am seeing it here, which I will not be able to answer because of the time constraints. I will try to answer those questions uh, one on one after this. Uh, webinar is over, right? So let me take the last question uh, by Diksha. We want to run code on more than five devices at the same time. And how it looks in live view? Can we see five devices on the same page? Okay, so live view, see basically uh, the live view is not for you to monitor how the execution is happening. If you really see the automation, the the, the advantage of the automation is you want to run the automation on multiple devices and get the reports or results as early as possible and analyze those re uh, results right and move further and when the execution is happening when the automation is running you want to utilize that time for some meaningful task maybe doing exploratory testing or creating new test cases or something like that now when you are running the automation on multiple devices and if you are sitting there and observing how it is happening on four or five or 10 devices, it will defeat the purpose of the whole automation, right? So that is not the intent of providing live view. Live view is provided in case you want to, or to uh, you know, debug certain things when you are maturizing your script. So that time, if you want to uh, see how the execution is happening, if there are unwanted pop-ups coming in or something else is happening wrong, and you want to trap that and then, you know, uh, fix that in the code and then naturalize your code. But that is the exact reason why live view is provided. It's not for the uh, monitoring uh, how it is happening on uh, throughout the test cycle on multiple devices. Okay, that's that's the whole purpose. Now, to answer your question here, yes, if you want, you can observe it on five devices as well, but you will have to open those five devices in five different tabs. Right, so practically you will be opening five tabs and watching in, uh, you know, uh, looking at the tab or looking at the device individually, um, independently at a time, uh, 
when you click on a specific tab okay so of course you can rearrange that uh, browser windows and arrange five uh, next to each other but that will not uh, solve your purpose right i hope uh, i have answered diksha uh, of course we are just one minute above but if you have any counter uh, question to this i can take this because we have set the context else i will get back to you uh, if you have any further um, counter questions on this all right so i think uh, there is no counter question from diksha here so i will leave it to uh, diksha maybe she can uh, get back to me uh, if she has any further questions so anyways so uh, there are a few more questions. I'm sorry, gentlemen. I will not be able to answer those questions now, um, looking at the time constraints which we have. But I promise you that I will get back to all of you with your uh, questions uh, answered. Thank you so much for attending the webinar today. Have a good day ahead. Bye-bye.